This year, my real estate photo business will take photos of between three and 4,000 houses, all without ever using any sort of flash or off-camera lighting. In fact, this is the exact gear setup that our photographers use. There's no flash and we like to keep it really simple. And every time I talk about that, a lot of photographers, especially those who are coming from weddings or portraits or any other type of photography or real estate photographers that have been doing this for a while, they're like, that's not professional. You can't do it that way. And they think that because we don't use a flash at my business in the way we teach things that we get worse quality photos. And therefore they say, I think that is completely unprofessional. And of course I'm going to use a flash. You have to use a flash to do it right. And the reality is a lot of times, I think the reason those photographers still use flash is because number one, if they're coming from weddings, portraits, whatever, you have to use flash, right? And so you think, okay, if that worked in this industry or this side of the industry, it's going to work in real estate. And that's not necessarily true. Or if you're coming from real estate photography with the flash, you maybe just haven't taken the time to look at the technology available today and the editing processes that people use over the last couple of years and just been able to see that the photos just are great without having to use a flash. So the way I look at it is it's just a technology shift thing where we had to use flash in the past to get great results. Now we have really good hand blended HDR that gets equal to, if not arguably better results, especially if you're not hundred percent confident with a flasher, don't have the process down fully like someone who's done this for years. But either way, even if you are someone who's shot real estate for years and use a flash, I hope this video will show you another way that you could get awesome real estate photos. And I hope that allows you to save time and make more money because that's why I started a photo business was to build a business and to make money. And so both of those things indirectly helped me with my goal. Number one, if I can save time, that's good because I can do more things that generate revenue for my business. And number two, if I can save money by saving training time, right? It takes a longer time to train someone to use a flash. It takes more time on site when you're shooting. If it's just you, it takes more money and gear. And so I'm a big fan of making things as simple as possible whenever possible. And I think that starts with ditching the flash, but I don't expect you to trust me yet. And so the first thing I wanna do is show you what the photos at my photo business look like. So you can get a baseline idea of what our photos actually look like. And here's what I'm not gonna show you. The photos in our portfolio on our website or on our Instagram are not the best photos we've ever taken. That doesn't serve us and that doesn't serve our clients. So we have fairly average photos. And so these are what our actual photos look like. You can see here on our Instagram, which you're welcome to go check out for yourself. So you can zoom into the photos and do whatever sort of checks you want, but you can see these photos are good photos. I mean, this is definitely at or above the industry standard in real estate media. And you can see the window views are great. The colors are great, which are two common reasons why people want to use flash. And you can see, I mean, all these photos are great. And so I guess the first thing you have to decide for yourself is are these photos, the way these photos look, representative and good enough for you to deliver at your business. And I would argue they are. And I think our business shows that because we do between three and 4,000 real estate photo shoots per year, which is a lot. If you break the math down by day, that's a lot of shoots every single day on our website. You can see that the photos are also the same. These ones are slightly better because they're like nicer representative houses of what we want to be shooting at least. So these photos are a little better, but overall, none of these were shot with flash. And, and just a quick side story here, we've used flash in the past. We've tested it. And I thought because all of the other professional photographers, at least the ones that had been around for a while were using it, that it must be better. And so in order to grow my business, I thought, well, I gotta learn how to use a flash. And I learned how to use it and I just wasn't impressed, especially coming from our side of the industry, shooting hand blended HDR. I was like, why would I add the flash? The photos, like they look at best the same, at worst, they look more artificial because when you're taking photos of a house, I mean, if I, you know, go to one of these houses, for example, if you add a flash into the room, unless you do it really well, and that definitely takes time, you change where the light came from, right? And so in this room, the light is coming from the lights above and these windows. And so unless you really take your time to, you know, in some cases they do this in architectural photography, they'll even add flash outside to make the windows stronger. That's not something I'm willing to do because we are trying to get in and out of a house in well under an hour. And so this is the first thing you have to do. You have to decide, hey, are these photos good enough for me? And if they are, we'll move on to actually how we do this. And that's gonna start with the actual camera settings that we use. So if you're newer to the industry, the reason someone would use flash is to add light to the room. And in a lot of cases, or for the most part at least, that's the balance between the light inside and outside the house. So in a normal shoot, the light outside the house is gonna be way brighter than on the inside, right? The sun's a lot brighter than whatever lights are above you. And so you need to add light to the room. And when you add light to the room, it allows you to balance the light inside and outside so you maintain the window views. And then the opposite is also true. If you just expose for the outside and you get nice crystal clear window views, the inside of the house is gonna be black or very dark colored and it's not gonna look great. So adding a flash allows you to add light into the room generally and balance it with the outside and give you those great shots where you can see out like you can when you're in person as a human. 
human, right? The camera's not as good as your eye. And so in order to get a viewer, an image that looks more like how your eye sees it, we have to do something. So one way is to add a flash into the mix and just actually brighten up the room when you take the photo. And number two is to do what's called HDR, which is high dynamic range photography. Now, when you say HDR to an established photographer, a lot of times they kind of roll their eyes because the HDR process, especially when it first came out in the first like five years it was popular, was awful. It created these really unrealistic looking images and just overall wasn't great. And I think that's actually where a lot of photographers, the, the drop off kind of happened is they saw it bad and they haven't revisited it. They haven't looked at HDR again to see all the stuff that's happened technology wise that allows you to get really, really good HDR. So to shoot HDR, what we do is we set our camera up to take three photos for every image that we take or every composition, right? So you can see on here, I have it set up to shoot AEB and each of these is a photo that it's gonna take. So that's the middle exposure, the normally lit photo. There's gonna be a dark photo and a bright photo. And so literally when I press the shutter button, the timer is gonna go off and it's gonna take three photos. You can probably hear that, but either way, Here's the photos we got. We got a bright one, a dark one, and a middle exposure. And then we take those photos, we outsource this process to an editing company that does this for a living and they're good at it. And they bring those photos into Photoshop and they blend them together. And so what that allows you to do, which you can see here on my screen, is get a bright photo, a middle exposure, and a dark photo, and then they blend those together. So this photo is where they're gonna get the windows from, right? And this photo is where they're gonna get the rest of the room. And I picked this example specifically to show you how much you can mess up this process and still get a great final photo. So typically, if this is the bright photo, it should be way, way brighter. The photographer that shot this at my company kind of messed it up a little bit, but that's okay. There's the middle exposure and there's the underexposed photo. We sent these three raw photos to our editor. They're in JPEG now, but that's just because I exported them that way to show you. We get this final photo back. We have great window views, the lighting is balanced everywhere, and overall the photo looks awesome. And so you're probably thinking, okay, great, I know how to shoot awesome real estate photos. Where the disconnect for me is, is how do I get them from this state to this state? And there are two routes you can go with this, and one I'm gonna highly encourage you to take over the other. So route number one is you can look up tutorials on how to hand blend photos in Photoshop. You'll learn literally how to open these up, layer them over each other, mask them out, and to create this final image. And that is going to take forever. Not only is it gonna take forever for you to actually learn and develop the skills to be able to edit the photos like that, but once you do develop those skills, even if you're really good, it's gonna take you a very long time per shoot spent in the editing room. Option number two, the option that I highly recommend is to outsource your editing. There are editing companies, most of them are based in the Philippines, Vietnam, or India, where their entire company is built around editing photos for real estate photographers. And the really cool thing is not only is the cost of living a lot cheaper in India than it is here, so you can spend less money on editing, it's also their daytime when it's our nighttime. So from a workflow perspective, you go out in the daytime, you take photos of your houses, you get back at the end of the day, you literally just copy the photos off your memory card, send them to your editor, and they get them in their morning, they edit them through their day and then they deliver them to you at night their time which is the next morning your time so it's kind of like Christmas morning you wake up to a bunch of ready to deliver photos and send them over to your clients and a lot of photographers will do it to save money but it's gonna cost you around 60 cents per image so about $20 for a real estate photo shoot to have awesome photos completely edited for you that are gonna be a lot better than you could do yourself now the other side of this is a lot of photographers will be like I need to learn how to edit my photos that's a skill set I should have and honestly I completely disagree with that part of the process of building a business is being willing to have people with a certain skill set help you so you can do more of what actually grows your business which is definitely not editing as far as order of importance goes the most important thing is working to get clients spending time on client acquisition especially when you're first starting number two is actually doing shoots and then like number 12 is editing and so it never makes sense to do this and the common argument is like well what if I have to do it in a pinch well your editor will be there available to you and there are a ton of different editing companies you can choose a lot of which have 24 seven availability and they're able to do that for you. Now, as far as where to actually find an editor goes, I'm gonna make it really easy for you. There's this company called Pixel Mob that I highly recommend and this is not a sponsored video. The cool thing about Pixel Mob is they are like Fiverr if you've heard of it, but just for real estate photo editors. So this is a marketplace where editors and photographers can meet and it's specific to real estate. And even 
cooler thing is this was actually built by someone who was a rep member who built their own real estate photo business and decided to launch this awesome marketplace. So I highly recommend checking out PixelMob. They were kind enough to give us a link that gives you $5 if you use it. It's pixelmob.com slash REPP. As you can see here at the top, and I'll link this down in the bio as well. That'll look like this and it'll give you $5 to try it out and find an editor. So that is our exact workflow at my photo business, Norman & Young. And I highly encourage you not to reinvent the wheel and just do what I taught you here in this video. Give it a shot and see how it works for your business. If you're already using Flash and you're a real estate photographer, ditching that Flash is gonna save you a ton of time. And if you're new to this and you're trying to get started, it's also gonna save you a ton of time because you're not gonna have to learn how to use anything that is mounted here to this hot shoe. And that's gonna allow you to spend more time on what actually counts in your business. If you'd like my team and I to help you launch your business or take your business to the next level, we'd love to work with you in our custom one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. You can find the quick application link below. Basically the process is really simple. You fill out a short form that tells us a little bit more about your business. And then you get to book a call with someone on our coaching team who will show you exactly what coaching would look like for you. It's custom to everybody. And what our guarantee would be based upon your market and the things that we'd have you do. So that's the really cool thing about coaching is we actually look into your market specifically on this call, your business, your goals, your schedule. And we say, based upon that, if you do this, if you do what we say, we can guarantee you this result. And how the guarantee works is super cool. So once we know more about you and your business and everything I just said, we say, hey, here's the amount that we can make sure happens for you in the next six months. And we're gonna back you with our money. And if you don't get there, we pay you the difference and get you there ourselves. And the reason we're able to do that is because if you do the steps that we recommend and that we show you, you will get that result. We've just done it enough times to know how it works in this industry. And so we'd love to talk with you more about what that would look like for you specifically. You can find the link below and I'll see you in the next video.